Today, let's talk about two women and the promise of the coming of Christ. Mary, did you know? Elizabeth, did you know? Blessed is she that believed in the fulfillment of the promises. Stay tuned. I for sure want to be where God is. Hallelujah. Good morning to everyone. Welcome to iChurch DMV on this beautiful morning, beautiful day after Christmas. Merry Christmas to all. Um, I hope that your day was filled with um, all the things that you wanted and needed and loved. Um, and to all of those that are uh, dealing with grief and sadness during this time. I sympathize with you. I know your pain. Um, I am so grateful, though, uh, that God has a plan for us and that he woke us up today again with purpose untouched. Um, it's brand new. So uh, we will give him the praise and the honor and the glory. Amen. Now, I will not be <laughs> for you long. Um, it is my honor, though, to have the benediction Sunday for 2021. Can you believe that it is the last Sunday of 2021? Like, I felt like it was just summertime and like yesterday was Christmas. So like, what's going on right now? But it is the last Sunday of 2021. And in keeping with my thing, of highlighting powerful and strong and amazing women in the Bible and combining that with the topic that um, Overseer tasked us with this season, and that is the promise of the coming of Christ. I will be drawing our attention this morning to two women in the promise, Elizabeth and Mary. Elizabeth and Mary. Now, to avoid having to read Luke chapter 1, verses 5 through 56, I'm going to pull out some of the scriptures that's going to frame our message. Now, we're going to read some scripture, but um, I will pull out some scripture that's going to help us to frame our message. But I always encourage you to go back and to read it in the entirety for your own study um, at a different time, for your own good. Amen? So we'll be reading this morning from Luke chapter one, uh, starting at verse 13, and I will be reading from the ESV version. So Luke chapter one, verse 13, and it reads, but the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great before the Lord. And he must not drink wine or strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord, to the Lord their God. And he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. Skip down to verse 24. It says, after these days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and for five months she kept herself hidden saying, thus the Lord has done for me in the days when he looked on me to take away my approach among people. Skip down now to verse 28. And it says, and he came to her, that's the angel Gabriel came to Mary and said, greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb 
and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Skip down now to verse 36. This is our conclusion. Um, it says, and behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has con also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. My bad, we're going to skip down again to our conclusion. Verse 39 says, in those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And I read all of that to get to this verse right here. It says, and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this time, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you would use your word to change us. We ask, Lord God, that you would use your word to speak to us, Lord God. We ask that your anointing would be among us, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time. We thank you for all of these Sundays that we have had with you in your glory, Lord God. And on this last Sunday of 2021, we ask that you would do it again, that you would revive us again, that you would speak to us through your word, Lord God. We love you. We thank you. We praise you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And we all say, amen. Hallelujah. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Mary, did you know? Elizabeth, did you know? I mean, I just want to read that scripture one more time because it's just so good to me. It says, and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. A promise. It was a promise made to these women. A word of honor a pledge, a vow, an oath, an assurance, or <clears throat> a guarantee. A promise is a declaration that one will do a particular thing or that a particular thing will happen to assure someone that, uh, that they will definitely do, give, arrange something, to give good grounds for expecting a particular occurrence or situation. A promise is a statement or a commitment by a person that he or she will do or will not do something. See, when we get married, we promise to love, honor, and cherish one another. And when we were kids, we pinky promised to swap candy or games or to be best friends forever. And sometimes parents promise their children to watch a certain show or to take them to a certain place to take them for ice cream or something like that. And if you don't do it, what do they always hit you with? But you promise. I know I cannot be the only one that has heard that as a parent. But what about God's promises? What about his promises to us? How are God's promises different than our marriage vows or pinky promises between kids? Well, first, God never breaks a single promise. Never. Every word he speaks comes to life. 
Numbers chapter 22, verse 19 says, God is not man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said and will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will he not fulfill? We can count on God's promises because of God's character. He is not human. He is not gonna have a bad day. He is not gonna forget. He is not gonna be too tired. He is not gonna hold a grudge against us because of something that we didn't do. God is the truth. And he only speaks the truth. He is the essence of righteousness and he cannot lie, unlike us. Second, God is unchanging. He never changes his person or his purpose, nor his position. What he decided to do 2000 years ago, he will do it. What he decided to do at the beginning of time, he will do it. What he has decided to do in the future, he will do it. He is unchanging. And third, we can count on God's promises because of his infinite wisdom. When God makes a promise, it is the best possible promise that he could make. He is not going to discern later that there could have been a better decision or it could have been a better promise. He never has to course correct. He is not making it up as he goes along. He knows the end from the beginning. His ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. In the Bible, there's, there has been discovered to be over 8,000 promises, 8,000, with seven, over 7,000 of those promises made specifically from God to humankind. God keeps his promises, ladies and gentlemen. See, God's promises are unfailing according to 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 56, the B clause of that verse. Not one promise has failed. God's promises are fulfilled on schedule According to Galatians chapter four, verse number four, God's promises are obtained through patience, says Hebrews six, verses 12 and 15. God's promises are kept by faith, says Romans 4, 20 and 21. God's promises are upheld by an oath that God made to himself in Hebrews chapter six, verse 13. God's promises are centered in Christ according to 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. And God's promises are confirmed by Christ, says Romans 15, verse eight. And I've said all of that to show that God is true and God is trustworthy and he does not, he cannot make a promise that he won't keep. It's when we trust, it's when we have faith, it's when we believe that we will see his promises in our lives. Blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. So to dive into our scripture for this morning, Elizabeth, like many other women, not just women in the Bible, but many women was barren. She was childless. And to add insult to injury, the Bible says she was old. I mean, to be exact, the Bible says she was advanced in years, but we know what they meant, right? The Bible also says that her husband, um, she, she and her husband, Zechariah, were both righteous before God and walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes according to our scripture, Luke 1, verse number six. And obviously a child had been in their prayers because the angel Gabriel specifically said to Zechariah, your prayer has been answered. It was the fulfillment of what was said and what was believed. 
even at a time when they weren't expecting it. <laughs> even at a time when it looked like it couldn't happen. It looked like it shouldn't happen, right? Even at a time when physically you would think this is not going to work. How can this be? But blessed is she that believed in the promise and in the fulfillment. Gabriel made a sevenfold promise to Zechariah and by proxy to Elizabeth. One, his first promise was, although barren and advanced in years, one, they would have a son. Two, they would name him John. Three, verse 14, his, ber his birth will be the cause of great joy, not just to his parents, but to others as well. Number four, John would be great in the sight of the Lord. Number five, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even in his mother's womb. Number six, uh, verse number 16, he will bring Israel back to God. Verse number 17, and most importantly, he would become the forerunner for the Messiah. And just as God promised, everything that he said to the said through the um, angel Gabriel came to pass. Number one, Elizabeth did give birth to a son, Luke 1, 57. Number two, he was known to us as John the Baptist. Number three, his birth brought joy to many, says Luke 1, 58. Uh, number four, he leaped for joy and was filled with the spirit in his mother's womb, verse 41. Number five, in Luke 7, 28, Jesus himself testified that there is none greater born than John. Number six, many were brought back to God through his powerful preaching. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And number seven, he indeed went before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah. He was the forerunner to our Jesus. So the exact fulfillment of these precise promises should make us all believe, right? I mean, if the promises concerning John are true, and they are, then the promises regarding Jesus are also going to be true. And all the promises that God has made to you and to me. Mary, did you know? Elizabeth, did you know? Monica, did you know? Blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. But our angel Gabriel was not done, thank God. He went and found Mary of Nazareth, a virgin girl that was engaged to Joseph, a descendant of David. And after pronouncing a blessing on her, oh, favored one, in verse 28, he made an 11-fold blessing to Mary. And yes, 11 fold is a word. I looked it up. Um, and the first three promises of this 11 fold blessing are found in verse 31 of our text. It says, one, you will be with child. Two, you will give birth to a son. Three, you will call his name Jesus. The next three promises are in verse 32. It says, he will achieve greatness. Number five, he will be called the son of the highest. Number six, he will be given David's throne. Our next three promises are in verse 33. Seven, he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. Number eight, his kingdom will never end. And our last three promises are in verse 35. And this is after Mary has asked this angel, how can this be? I have never been with a man. Promise number nine says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Promise number 10, the power of the highest will overshadow you. And number 11, the Holy One who is to be born will be called 
the Son of God. Hmm. Then Gabriel topped up all these promises. He wrapped them up like a beautiful Christmas present and said, verse 37, for nothing will be impossible with God. Blessed is she who believes. And we know that every promise, all 11 promises spoken over Mary's life came to pass. We know this, right? We are not in doubt about any of those promises, are we? This is not in question. Is it? Otherwise, how would we be here today? I know I'm here only because of the promises that were made to Mary that day. Because Jesus came through the virgin. He was baptized by John. He lived a sinless life. He was crucified. He hung. He bled. He died. And he rose. And he is coming back again, all because Mary believed. Did she know? Elizabeth, do you know? Did she know? Brianna, do you know? Elaine, do you know? See, throughout this whole narrative, Luke has interwoven the lives of these two very special women, different in age and season in life, yes, but the same spirit and the spirit of their commitment, which was what motivated them to offer themselves to the Savior and to submit to these promises, to these ludicrously sounding promises. I mean, getting pregnant? at an advanced age, getting pregnant as a virgin, the son of God, no less. I mean, let's just be real for a moment. I mean, how many of us would be having to backtrack to see, did we have a head injury or something? Like I would be asking myself, am I high or intoxicated? Like what is this whole craziness about this getting pregnant at advanced age and as a virgin and the son of God. I mean, let's just be real with ourselves for a second, right? Because the truth of the matter is, as a human, I would be like, no, I don't, I don't think so. And I, and that's for sure why God chose Elizabeth and Mary, because Monica, mm-mm. I would have everybody jacked up with my disobedient self. Hey, I'm just being true. I'm just keeping it real. I'm glad that I was born in AD, okay? In the dispensation of grace. And I have Jesus to call on, amen? Because I wouldn't have died for none of y'all. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, I'm keeping it real, keeping it real. <laughs> but these two women, these two amazing women, these two mothers, were told of the place of their sons, that they there's the place that their sons would hold in the divine economy of God. And each of them accepted <laughs> their role and the role of their son with humble obedience. Mm. Did she know? Did they know? Mary, did you know? Elizabeth, did you know of the promises? Lisa, do you know? Florence, do you know? Linda, do you know? I mean, do we know the promises that God has spoken to us? Have we heard them? And have we discounted them because of age or race or gender or skill or money or fear? Have we said, no, that can't, that's not going to happen. Did God say something to you? Did he answer your prayer? And because it was so big, it was so large, it looked unattainable. Did we stop believing because we couldn't see how it was going to work out? We couldn't see how it was going to turn out. We couldn't see how it was going to happen. Have we been promised something and because it was delayed or it didn't come when we thought it was supposed to come, did we change our focus because we were doubting? Verse 45 of Luke 1 
says, and blessed is she that believed. She that trusted, she that understood, that was certain of, that was convinced of, that counted on, that didn't doubt, that kept the faith and put confidence in. Blessed is she that believed that there would be a fulfillment that there would be a realization, a carrying out of, an attainment, an achievement, a gratification and contentment. Uh, blessed is she that believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to, what was articulated, what was announced, expressed, voiced, or uttered. A fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord, not from her pastor, not from her husband, not from her best friend, but spoken to her from the Lord, from Jehovah, from El Shaddai, the Almighty God, from Jehovah Jireh, our provider, from Jehovah Nisi, our banner, from Jehovah Ora, our light, from Jehovah Rapha, our healer, from Jehovah Shalom, our peace, from Elohim, our creator God, from Emmanuel, God with us. All the names of who the Lord is and all the actions of those names, he has promised them all to us. Healing, peace, providing, creating, light, love, protection, and fathering. Whatever he promised, he will provide. Do you know? Julie, do you know? Tabitha, do you know? Jules, do you know? The promises he has spoken to you, do you know? Do you know? They are yours. He's already made them yours. He has written your name on those promises. Do you know? Blessed is she that believes. Blessed is he that believes. Overseer, do you know? Kevin, do you know? Josh, how about you? Do you know Jimmy and Tyrell and Ward and Greg? Do you know? God is not late in his promises to you. In the fullness of time, God sent his son. That means when the time was right, in his divine timing, and in the fullness of time, the promise of the coming of Christ will be evident in the earth. And in the fullness of time, the promises that he has made to you will be known in the earth. Believe, trust, have faith, don't doubt. You are complete in Christ. You are uncondemned in Christ. You are a, a new creation. Received the promises and are still yet receiving. Blessed is she that believes. Blessed is he that believes that there will be a fulfillment of his promises. And I'll close with the words of Paul in 2 Corinthians verse 1, chapter 20. And he says, For all the promises of God find their yes in him. That is why it is through him that we utter our amen to God for his glory. Amen? Amen. Glory to God.